The most common major diseases, like heart disease, diabetes, and cancer, can have many different causes. Your genes can play a big role, but often are influenced by chemicals or other environmental factors, by your lifestyle, or by other non-genetic factors. Scientists would like to do a big research study that helps them understand how all these factors interact together, but it would be very difficult. Studying the relationship between genes and environment, in fact, in its basic core, assumes that genes vary as do environments. Because if a gene only came in two varieties, and if an environment came in only two varieties, the problem would be much easier. But we know that's not the case. On any aspect of the environment that we pick, it could be temperature outside, it could be the cholesterol in our diet, it could be the drugs that we take, there's wide variation in the responses that they create. So we have to consider a very large number of different environments. We now know from modern genetic research that emanated out of the Human Genome Project that genes don't come in simple yes-no varieties or black and white varieties. They actually do come in a dizzying great variety. So that also means we've got to sample lots of individuals to make sure that all of the varieties that comprise man, in this case, or humans, in fact, are included. So when one wants to study the effects of many, many genes that come in many varieties in a wide number of different environments, essentially it leads to a fairly large study large numbers of individuals that we'd have to examine both their genes and the environments in which they live. What makes it particularly both difficult, challenging, and exciting is we have to follow these individuals. Disease is itself a dynamic event. So this means that in order to understand disease, we have to follow individuals over a period of time. And the longer we study them, the much more subtle aspects of disease, when it occurs, in whom it occurs, what precipitates the disease, and how it can be mitigated, can be understood with much greater detail than we currently do. No program large enough to do this has ever been done in the United States, but other countries have begun studying gene-environment interactions. Many people in these countries have given their permission for researchers to take genetic samples, and these researchers will study the genomes in conjunction with environment and lifestyle to better understand how these factors interact to cause disease. A number of countries have just launched research programs to study this, including Great Britain, Iceland, Estonia, Japan, and Canada. Here in the United States, the National Institutes of Health and other federal health agencies have a similar project in mind, but it has not yet been approved or funded. NIH would like to get a lot of public input before going ahead to make sure U.S. citizens are comfortable with the project, have a say in how it's run, and are willing to participate in it. What would really give us answers to how disease occurs would be a genes and environment study of hundreds of thousands of people. People in different parts of the country exposed to different kinds of environmental risks from different ancestral backgrounds, trying to really understand not just for a few people, but for a very large number of people, a snapshot, if you will, of our country. What is going on in terms of their exposures, what kinds of hereditary factors do they bring uh, to those exposures based on DNA? And then what happens over the course of a few years in terms of whether illness occurs or whether they stay healthy? To do that kind of analysis, you need a lot of information about those people. So they would need to be willing uh, to volunteer for a study where they're going to be tracked rather closely to see what's happening as far as their medical health, as far as their DNA, as far as measuring things about what's in the environment around them. But this would give us, for the first time, the ability to really put all of the technologies and all of the new ideas that have arisen in the last 10 years or so into a study that would become a discovery engine for everything we need to know about medicine in the future.
NIH and other federal health agencies propose to collect genetic samples and data from many Americans, up to 500,000 U.S. residents. In order to reflect the diversity of the American population, participants would need to include men, women, and children of all ages who come from every level of society and every ethnic group, who live and work in rural, urban, and suburban areas. In some cases, everyone living in the household might be asked to participate. Someone from the study would explain how the study would be done and what would be involved if a person were to agree to participate over the life of the study, which could go on for 10 or more years. The volunteer would need to sign an informed consent agreeing to participate. An appointment would then be scheduled for each participant to come into a local medical facility, perhaps a community clinic or hospital, for the first visit. At that first visit, volunteers would give researchers a detailed medical history, including information about their diet and lifestyle. They would be asked about possible environmental exposures, such as chemicals or contaminants in their environment, their workplace, or their homes. They would get a complete physical that was appropriate for their age and give a blood sample. Some volunteers might be asked to monitor their environment in more detail by keeping a regular food or exercise diary, or even using a device that could monitor exposure to environmental contaminants. Periodically, perhaps every six months to a year, someone from the study would contact the participant to update their medical data with new information about general health, new illnesses, lifestyle or diet changes, and environmental exposures. A second physical exam might be done toward the end of the study. The blood sample and the data collected would be coded before it was sent to the National Institutes of Health. The name of the volunteer would be removed from the sample and data and replaced by a number. The coded blood samples and data from all of the participants would be sent to the National Institutes of Health. There, a genetic analysis would be done on the blood sample. The data from the genetic analysis and the blood would be stored along with all of the other information collected on that person in a data bank. Researchers could apply to the NIH to access the coded samples, genetic information, and other medical data in order to study how genes, environment, and lifestyle contribute to health and disease. When they complete their research and publish their findings, these data also would go back into the data bank at NIH and become part of the permanent collection of information from this project, thus furthering our understanding of the genetic and environmental contributors to many diseases common in the population. Researchers would then be able to look at this de-identified information and mine it for all kinds of conclusions about why disease occurs. So if, for instance, in this cohort of half a million or so people over the course of a few years, a number of cases of diabetes were diagnosed. Well, okay, who got diabetes? What was the circumstance as far as their genetic risk? And what kind of environmental exposures? In that case, you'd particularly want to look at diet. You'd want to look at exercise. Uh, how does that all fit together? And are there particular subsets of diabetes that we hadn't appreciated before that you could actually take apart when you have this volume of data and a lot of very smart scientists and physicians looking at it? That then might lead you to this eureka moment where you say, oh, that's why diabetes happened to this person because they had that unique combination of a particular environmental exposure, something in their diet, as well as a genetic risk and now we can start to use that information to prevent diabetes in people in that circumstance in the future. The Genetics and Public Policy Center at Johns Hopkins University has been asked by NIH to find out what questions or concerns the public has about big genetic studies like this, and will be holding focus groups, community leader interviews, and town halls in different parts of the country to discuss this proposed project.